Hello there, my name is Mooseman, and today I'm here to inform you of whether you should play Wait or Avoid the Off-Road Kart Racer Grip. As always, we'll be looking at gameplay, visuals, future potential, and value before making a final verdict on the pre-alpha version of Grip. Grip is a kart racer and spiritual successor to the PlayStation game Roll Cage, in which you race cars that are a bit different from your normal kart. Instead of being restricted to a racetrack, the game allows you and encourages you to climb up walls and flip your car using the unique wheel gripping mechanics. Your wheels are designed to grip on the sides of walls and ramps in addition to allowing your car to work upside down, and you will be flipping quite a bit as you try to survive the dangerous track conditions as well as your opponents using weapons to try and blast you off the course. While I didn't get to play Roll Cage as a kid since I lived in a Nintendo-only household until 2007, I can see why the developers decided to revisit the concept because the style of racing is a ton of fun. The feeling of speed you get in grip is great. Not only do you feel fast, but the game has an oddly sci-fi-ish realism since you don't feel as limited to the track as most other racing games. In other words, the game has its own laws of physics, and once you learn them you can perform very cool maneuvers. For those of you who have played Roll Cage, the game is an extremely faithful adaptation to the original. Everything from the weapons to the car design is an updated recreation of the original. While this does create some questionable balance in terms of physics, the game will definitely feel nostalgic for the people who enjoyed the original back in 1999. Besides the sense of speed, another thing that I really liked when I was playing Grip was the weapons. Like any kart racer, you have access to weapons and power-ups including seeking rockets, gatling guns, mines, boosts, and shields. The weapons are all fun to use and have a noticeable, satisfying impact on your opponents. However, what I like most about the weapons from a gameplay standpoint is how you can defend against them. Instead of being like traditional kart racers where defensive weapons are your only defense, your positioning is extremely important in determining how much of a hit you will take. Getting hit by a missile while turning will cause you to flip over and slow you down immensely, while positioning yourself just right to get hit straight behind you will result in a lessened effect. You can also choose to try and dodge abilities due to the terrain stopping all weapons including seeking missiles, but at a greater risk of exposing yourself to a more deadly impact. This is only possible due to the amount of verticality present in the game, and the result is a surprising amount of depth in comparison to other kart racers. In addition to the primary race mode, the game has three other modes. Time Trials, which allows you to time your fastest lap, Arena, which is a battle type mode where each weapon hit results in health lost until only one car remains, and Playground, which is an open map that allows you to test the physics in the game in addition to hunting for collectibles. Each of these modes is fun for a while, but honestly only provide a minor diversion from the primary race mode. This brings me to my biggest gripe I have about Grip is that it lacks content. But that's to be understood since the game is in pre-alpha, and it's a pre-alpha in the truest sense of the term. The game only includes three race maps, two of which are still works in progress, and there is no online multiplayer whatsoever. Time Trials also lacks any online comparison to really allow players to compete for the best times. Being in pre-alpha, the game also has quite a few glitches, most of which occur when you do something stupid, but they are there nonetheless. The first one that I ran into quite a bit was falling outside the track on a particularly dangerous turn and not being able to get back on the track quickly. Since you can't be destroyed in grip, whatever situation you get yourself into, you will have to get yourself out of, and getting stuck on parts of the track or on invisible barriers can happen quite a bit. Invisible barriers also end up being quite a bit of a problem in terms of keeping the flow of the race. The game utilizes invisible walls in its level design a bit too much, especially in the in-progress stages, resulting in you feeling a little more restricted than you should be. In a game where you're flying through the track at huge speeds, there seems to be a distinct lack of natural boundaries to keep you in the track. While invisible walls are fine sometimes, the game almost seems to rely on them to keep you inbounds, and this can ruin the immersion. A funny quirk I discovered while testing the boundaries of the maps was that, like normal walls, you can actually drive up the invisible barriers to a degree, which causes several strange glitches. The final minor gameplay related criticism I have is that the cars in grip lack grip. The cars seem to slide around a lot more than necessary, which results in you flying off the surface you are driving on a little too frequently. 
Each bump and jump will cause you to fly into a wall or spin into a position that causes you to stop completely, ruining that sense of speed I praised earlier. While practicing the game does reduce this immensely, if the cars became a little bit heavier or had a bit of faster of acceleration, it would probably solve the issue. However, I believe this instability is just a quirk of trying to emulate the style of the original roll cage as closely as possible. Grip uses the Unreal 4 engine and as such it's a beautiful looking game. On my GTX 770 I was able to run the game on full epic settings outside of post processing while the game held 60 frames per second for around 95% of the time. Post processing dropped the frame rate like a rock but those with higher end graphics cards will not be disappointed visually. One of the things I really enjoyed aesthetically was the overall verticality of the game. Cars and weapons didn't feel restricted to the track like a lot of other kart racers do and it helped with the immersion greatly. Missiles fly through the sky and going through pipes made you consider your positional height more carefully. Weapons in general have a really great aesthetic feel to them, as each one feels powerful and meaningful even if all they do is knock your opponents around a bit. While the levels are still in development, the game design is looking good so far. Each map is themed and has a different overall feel to the driving. Outside the aforementioned loss of immersion due to some invisible barriers, I found myself constantly immersed in each racing environment. While the game was created with the intention of replicating Roll Cage's gameplay, the maps reminded me more of the Star Wars Racer games maps in terms of design and length, which is a good thing. Each track feels sufficiently long and has several routes that vary in difficulty, providing a satisfying amount of environments to drive through. Since the game is in a pre-alpha state, future potential is especially important to look at. While the obvious things to look for in the future are more maps in online mode, how much depth these features have will determine whether or not this game evolves into a great must-have PC kart racer. Online needs to be robust enough to keep people involved, and simply having online mode that allows you to race against players isn't enough. Having a decent matchmaking and ranking system, and making that ranking system meaningful are going to be essential to keeping the player base growing over time, which in my experience seems to be one of the biggest challenges of indie online games. Gameplay wise I would like to see some additional race modes such as team modes or team battle, but overall just the expansion of what's already in the game should result in a great experience in the future. Grip is currently priced at $16, but as it currently stands the game doesn't have enough content to make that price a good deal. As it stands, even if you explore all the game has to offer, you still probably won't be satisfied, with really the only replayability being present in split-screen multiplayer with friends. Grip is a good concept and a good pre-alpha, but it's not yet complete enough to get my full recommendation. The racing is solid and it's great to see the developers reviving older cult classics, but the game still has a long way to go before it has enough replayability to be worth that price. That is why I recommend that you wait on Grip to get more feature complete before buying. A good kart racer on PC is something that I look forward to, and Grip definitely has the potential to be that game in the future. Thank you for watching this episode of Play, Wait, or Avoid. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more games like Grip. Also, if you had a similar experience with this game or don't agree with my verdict, leave a comment down below and let me know and we can discuss it further. If you would like to watch another review of a high-speed racing game, you're in luck because the last review I just did was Fast Racing Neo, an F-Zero style racing game for Wii U. Or you could check out my review of Jotun, a Titan Souls style game with a unique hand-drawn aesthetic.